DS Complex, hardest channel on YouTube. All right, so since that last Suicide Boys video is going crazy, I'm gonna do a little calm before the storm joint. Not War versus Suicide Boys. I'm gonna go ahead and react to that album after this, and I'll drop it probably in segments, or I might do it in the whole video, I'm not sure. Kinda just depends on the copyright. But I want y'all to witness me research and figure out who's who right here, because I don't even know who's who, to be honest with y'all. <laughs> So, alright, I'm gonna look this shit up real fast, man. In the past, when I looked this up, I did see that they were cousins. Got Scram. Got Ruby the Cherry. Alright, so that's Scram, right? And that's Ruby the Cherry. Okay, so let's see. Like, wear masks and shit. <laughs> I'm looking at the tattoos, though. All right, so based off the tattoos, that scrim, that's cherry, right? <laughs> They're going to be killing me in the comments if I end up getting them wrong, but I'm pretty sure I got this right. Just based off the tattoos, I might be tripping, I don't know. Yeah, so just based off the tattoos here, I can already tell this is scrim, it's cherry. All right, all right, well, I don't know nothing about them, to be real, so we're about to learn something. Here we go. Side boys. Blanco Leopardo. Weddo, Indiana, Sucky Fort Wayne. And there are a couple other names, aren't there? There are a bunch. Could you please run them off? Lil Wa, Young Plague, Norman Atomic, uh, Cutthroat, Sigity Slaw, Sigity Villain, Scrummy the Villain, Northside Shorty, Lil Hurst. <laughs> Odd enough? That's me. Odd enough, baby. The Snow Leopard. OG. Uh, giraffe neck. Yeah, giraffe neck. Let's go. Big neck. He's OG line, man. OG line, man. Damn, I forgot about that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Lil Oozing. Uh, young Hank Moody. George Washington's AR-15. <sighs> uh, young Heath Ledger. Lil Wa. Um. Is Ruby doing pretty good? He's doing really good. My memory's fucked from drugs, so. Uh, Scarecrow? Yeah. Shit, now you got me all fucking spooky. Though. Can you help Ruby out, Scrum? Spooky. Yeah, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Spooky to scary. Yeah. Spooky to scary. <laughs> Does it? I don't know what they talk. I'm so out of the loop, man. I'm, I'm trying to pick it what I can. In there. Not That's sure. not enough, is it? It doesn't in there. But is it good for these purposes? What do you think? I think so. <sighs> I guess so. And right off the bat, I have a gift for you, Suicide Boys, a 1999 original Source magazine with Lil Wayne and the Hot Boys. Damn. Damn. Holy fuck. He knows his shit. Original. What can you say about Lil Wayne? He brought you out on stage. He did in uh, Finland, and, yeah, in Helsinki. What was that like? Like, this is 1999. Where were you in 99? And you were on stage, and could you explain? In 1999, uh, I was in fourth grade in 1999. Which means I was in fifth grade. Yeah. We were worshiping these guys yeah. back then. You can check out some of the pictures that I marked right there of the source from 99. Do you have a big magazine collection? I do. And you actually sample them, don't you, on Bizarro? We do, we do. Absolutely. What was it like sampling them? Was that hard to sample them? Uh, no, not at all. Not at Me all. Too. Wait, is it he samples them? Am I tripping? Yes, yeah. back then. You can magazine? check out some of the pictures that I marked right there of the source from 99. Do you have a big magazine collection? I do. And you actually sample them, don't you, on Bizarro? We do, we do. Absolutely. What was it like sampling them? Was that hard to sample them? Uh, no, not How's at all. Work? Not at all. Me too. We yeah. got the new sample. We got something new coming out. We can't give too much away right now, but we got something new coming. And speaking of samples, etc., I have another gift okay, for you. An original Kingpin Skinny Pimp cassette. <laughs> all right, this is good. This is, this is good. He's... Yo, did y'all see that Aiden Ross stream where it was like him and Lucky and they were sitting there? And Lucky had pretty much told Aiden that all of this Narwhal shit is scripted. What y'all think? Y'all think this shit is scripted or what? He's one of the OGs. He's, uh, I, I sample him a lot to this day. I'm actually shout out. Babylon. Shout out Kingpin Skinny Pimp. We talk, uh, got a good relationship and, uh, this dude's a legend. I look up to him. Yeah, this is crazy. This is crazy. I appreciate this. Well, it's really hard to get his releases, so that's amazing that you sampled them. Right. Do you have any of his releases? 
Not physical copies, I don't. I'm steady just uh, hijacking off of YouTube. From Memphis, right? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. I would argue one of the OGs before the big hardcore movement took off. He inspired a lot of people that came after him. In your youth, Ruby, did Kiki babysit you? What the fuck? Yes, she did. For a long time. <laughs> Shout out Kiki. What the fuck, dude? Okay, it's real. Whatever. <laughs> Ah, <laughs> uh, damn! I didn't expect that one, Nardwar. You got me with that one. We were we were gonna act pretty nonchalant because uh, uh, shout out Kiki, rest in peace, Costa. Yeah, damn, R.I.P. Wow, good one. What was it like to babysit you? <laughs> uh, I doubt any older female it, would want to babysit me. I think me this could be because I, I was very handsy as a kid. So, what about you, Scrim? Uh, what about me? As a kid. As a kid, I, I was actually pretty good, man. I kept to myself. Um, I got into some trouble as I started getting older, but for the most part, I just balled, <laughs> DJed, and uh, did pretty good in school until I didn't. But yeah, that's that's about it. Mark Korea, drumline. What? Dude. Yeah, that's... Uh, <laughs> okay, yeah, he gave me my first couple drum lessons, and... Uh, Took it over from there, taught myself after that, but he gave me the- Oh shit, he plays the drums? That's what's so. up. I used to play the drums at one point. <laughs> Very briefly though. Dude. Yeah, that's uh... <laughs> okay, yeah, he gave me my first couple drum lessons and uh, took it over from there, taught myself after that, but he gave me the basics and I got them down with him. That's so wild. There's no way he, he you ain't gonna find out shit about me. Fuck. There's no way. <laughs> he got you. He got me, he got me, yeah. damn. That's crazy. That was like 12. That's crazy. No, nah, don't tell Nara War that. He's about to drop the whole list. <laughs> this man gonna know <laughs> where you lived, <laughs> like your address. You gonna know your whole fucking... You your gonna know your class, bro? Like, <laughs> What can you tell me about uh, Slim? <laughs> <laughs> That's Slim Gucci, baby. Slim Gucci. Uh... That's my baby brother. Damn. That's my uh, my baby this brother. Be our favorite picture of him ever. This one right here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That just it just says. I was you know, I told you. He's uh he produced a couple tracks for us. Some of his first beats yeah. ever, actually. He's trying to do his own thing in music right now. I'm super proud of him. And you've gone to some of his games and coached him. Yeah, 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 I did. I coached him. Uh, his basketball, of course. Basketball, actually basketball, football, baseball. I coached him uh, his whole life. Yeah. What's the importance of partners in crime? Wow. <laughs> so uh, partners in crime is local New Orleans legends. And uh, one of the first mix CDs Scrim ever made for me uh, back when you could burn CDs on a computer was uh, had Block Party by Partners in Crime. And that's a New Orleans bounce legend. Like that, those, that song is probably the most classic New Orleans bounce song ever. Yeah, uh, Partners in Crime, that's when I first got introduced to bounce music in New Orleans. And uh, New, yeah, New Orleans Block Party was the first song I ever heard. And also, so they got a guy on here, Kango Slim. He's half of the group, and he used to sing on these bounce songs. And uh, it was one of the first times I heard autotune, even before T-Pain. Alicia Fields. It samples. Damn. From what I saw on that wiki page, I did kind of just like skim through it. I didn't like really like read it. If you got some inspiration from T-Pain, that's kind of fire. Like uh, if you know anything about T-Pain, he used to like grow up singing in the church and stuff like that. You know, like it's crazy because I don't know if y'all have ever heard him actually sing, but he could sing, man. He don't even need no auto tune, but he went out of his way to pioneer that shit. Oh. Yeah, it does. Dude, we got so many songs, I can't remember <laughs> everything. But you are right. Yeah, you're right. You're right. You're but right. very important partners in crime to Suicide Boys. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. I I don't think I would have gotten into music the way I did um, without hearing them. Seriously. They got me into DJing, dancing, all kind of stuff. Speaking of songs, you have so many. You had 770 songs on SoundClick. SoundClick. <laughs> SoundClick. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. That's where I used to uh, I used to upload beats on there to uh, 
to try and sell and get people to hear and stuff like that. Yeah. But 770. Yeah, this guy's a fucking monster. It's crazy. Yeah, <laughs> that number's probably more in uh, 17,000 these days. But yeah, SoundClick. Yeah. That's where I. Uh, that's where I tried to like sell my beats and stuff <laughs> way back in the day when I first started producing. And now there are like 44 or more Suicide Boys released. That's a stupid grind, especially like whenever you first start now, 700 or something like that's crazy. He says, yeah, I think we're close to 50, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. And so many names. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, it's getting hard to come up with, uh, with, yeah, with titles, with more stuff. Thank you, Twitter. Thank you, Twitter. This is where it all began, didn't it? Is this where it all began? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So, um, uh. I uh, was done with making music with bands because I was tired of working with other people and I started doing rap and making beats on my own because uh, I figured I didn't have to answer to anybody and I knew he was doing the same thing so I figured why not uh, see if he wanted to link up. A tweet that should be framed. This, uh, could you, like, this, could you, this is the beginning, isn't it? You know where I was at when I got this tweet? Um, I was working at the furniture store uh, and I, I remember reading this tweet when I was in the furniture store and then I also replied to him on the furniture store computer to this tweet. It's you know crazy, crazy. this has your old handle, DJ Scrim. And your old Instagram handle was at Scott Sucks, if you remember. Yeah. And this is 2011, so this is the beginning, but shit didn't get done for another two years. Yeah, after. Yeah. So. yeah, yeah. What happened? Uh, he, he, he had... Uh, he had a contract with Universal Republic, so he couldn't work with me unless I was willing to pay based off what they told him. So right. we, we waited till his contract was up and we said, fuck him. And we just started working together. Yeah. What did you want to charge Ruby? <laughs> I didn't want to oh charge him anything. Yeah. Right? My, what wanna... did they want to charge Ruby? Oh, I don't know. The prices, the prices varied. But they, I was like a little in-house producer for them. It was actually quite miserable. They would. Uh, I, actually, I actually tried to get him to sneak me some under the table, yeah. but he... he yeah, I was just. I didn't want to put him in a hard spot. Yeah, yeah, so. yeah, yeah. Uh, it was it was actually quite a miserable job because they would just tell you, "I need pop type beats, I need these type beats, I need a hip hop type beat, stuff like that," and I just constantly cooking, and none of it was actually what I wanted to make. I remember you showed me. Uh, you're like, "Yeah, they got me." Yeah, it turns to a fucking chore if you sitting there making shit that you don't want to make. No, I've been there because like. Whenever I was like in my full producer mode, like I was just trying to find people to network with, you know what I'm saying? And then like I wanted to make like hard trap beats and shit like that. And then the only people that I can like really connect with and contact, and like con successfully contact, motherfuckers talking about some. Oh, can I get some Bryson Tiller? I was like, what the fuck, bro? Like you see, I'm not making no damn Bryson Tiller ass beats, bro. Like what the hell are you? <laughs> Like, what are you on about? You know what I'm saying? You're making like, fucking dubstep beats and you showed me like, uh, your first yeah, dubstep beat. Yeah, yeah. It was trash, but whatever. Now, I want to go way back to give you guys some legendary New Orleans history. This is MC Tucker and DJ Irv yeah. doing Where They At, the first bounce song ever. Wow. Oh, shit. And it sampled Trigger Man. Y'all be listening yeah, to Trigger Man. Yeah. The Trigger Boys. Drag rap was the song. Tick it, tick it, tick it, tick it, tick it, tick it, tick it. But that's the first bounce song ever, and I thought perhaps maybe in future a Suicide Boys sample. Maybe we'll sample that. Absolutely. Do we need to give you production credit? Ah, <laughs> boom. <laughs> what can you say about early bounce and Trigger Man? It inspired a movement. It inspired a whole sound, which, I mean, just look at what's happened. Beyonce's uh, done songs in regards to bounce. Drake has done bounce songs. I mean, it's, it's worldwide now. Shake for your motherfucking hood if, if it's, it's all good. good. Shake for your motherfucking hood if it's all good. Fucking right, it's all right. Fucking right, right, it's all right. Fucking right, it's all right. But all I can see four horsemen coming closer to me. I think I'm about to die. We'll see. Is that your mom's favorite song? Yes, it is my mom's. What the fuck? Okay, yeah, I think he it knows is where he gets his info. It is my mom's favorite song. Uh, we contacted our families. Yeah. The gig's up. You, call, you talked to Kelly? Nope. Yeah, he the did. Gig's up. If this isn't if this isn't scripted, that's exactly what he does. He goes. He's going to their close friends or close family. That's where he's getting the information. If it's not scripted, that is only way. That's yeah. the only way. Uh, 
That's my mom's favorite song. I don't think she's ever listened to any music by Suicide Boys past the first Razor. Um, and I remember I came home to my parents' house one day and she was cooking gumbo. And she's like in the kitchen stirring the pot and she's like rapping some, some of my lyrics talking about like, I don't know, I said something in the song about busting nuts. And she said that and I was like, I don't ever want my mom to listen to my music ever again. <laughs> Your dad has a Biggie shirt? Yes. Yes, he does. <laughs> so rap is common in the household. Yeah, my dad loves the old stuff. Biggie, Tupac, um, Dr. Dre, Snoop Dogg, that kind of thing. A lot of G-Funk. Where do you guys pee during Mardi Gras? Uh, anywhere you fucking can. Uh, well, I got alcohol poison in my pants. Aren't there some place? Yeah. What? Excuse me? What? Yeah. yeah, I got alcohol poisoning in high school. And you want to know a funny story? That's so tough. when they came, when the ambulance came and they were carting me off to the ambulance, the legend is that I had a big ass boner. Bet you didn't find that one out. <laughs> <laughs> actually, <laughs> they actually have air P and P. Uh, what the fuck? I don't know. They, they probably do now, yeah. Or you can find out where to pee. Yeah, it's... Oh, that actually is smart. Yeah, whoever, it is smart. Oh, yeah. Shout out whoever did that. I didn't know it's about that. the entire city of New Orleans smells like piss, but... Yeah, people do rent out their houses, don't they? Like, yeah. uh, have you ever heard of that? Yeah, I mean... I would never do On um, Mardi Gras, it's kind of like anything goes, really. I, I When I was a kid, going to Mardi Gras parades, I would just kind of wander in just a random house and... Just act like you belong there, and you'll be good. Just take a piss in the bathroom. That's and how go. you do it. What are snowballs? Snowballs is uh, New Orleans, uh, I guess, dessert. It's kind of like a snow cone, except it's in a styrofoam cup. Uh, you could put ice cream in the middle of it. Um, I just eat it with ice. Yeah, I like I like plain ice too. What is going on here? What are these? Ice cream in the middle of a snow cone sounds crazy. I'm not even gonna lie. Oh, I, I have uh, uh, wrap snacks, the masterpiece. I have a couple of these in my pantry back home in New Orleans, but I won't eat them. I'm just holding them to save onto them. Actually, the best wrap snack that I've had. What's the, is it? Boosie with the hot one Boosie with the hot, the hot one, yeah. The hot chips from Boosie. That's, I think it's that's like, like, but that's a gift for you. Not Thank expired you. either. Not mine, expired. mine are definitely expired. Wow. Mine are, so you can actually eat this one. We might have to eat this. Yeah, we can eat tonight. All right. Yeah. yeah. What do you think about well, that as like a pre-gig snack? Would you have that? Uh, or are you a collector scum? You're kind of a collector scum and that you want, you want to open the package, right? I don't want to open it. I collect everything. Yeah, I don't know about eating before a show. I'd probably puke. Yeah, we stick to fruits before shows, so, so it's not too heavy. It keeps you hydrated. Yeah. Well, I know you're into collecting, so I thought I'd give you another gift. A Star Wars original there you go, bro. book and cassette. Wow, Damn. Return of the Jedi too. Because you love the war horse, don't you? Yeah, dude, what, is this from the fucking 80s? Like It's dialogue and pics as well. Yeah, it's original. And ch if you pull it out, there's like actual, like there's a book of pictures. No way, wow. He got more stuff about you. He definitely couldn't get in touch with my family. <laughs> yeah, I cannot do Star Wars, dog. Like, growing up is the only thing that my parents be watching in the living room. <laughs> It's like, man, like, put something else on, dog. Damn. <laughs> From 1978. He wow. couldn't get in touch with my family. Okay, cool. That's that's awesome. But it doesn't stop there. We also have some original Star Wars wallpaper for you wow. from 1978. Look at that. Not to put on your new house. No. Whose new house? Her new house. Ha <laughs> ha! Whoa. It's like he did talk to somebody. All right, yeah, he, did. he talked to someone. I know you ain't getting that house. That house that's never gonna be finished. That one, or it'll be finished November. But yeah, that's original awesome. Star Wars 1978 vintage. I'm not sure about the stickiness on the back. It seems well preserved. So suitable for framing or actually wallpapering. Or uh, this looks like papaya on the back, you know, made out of papaya. And lastly, because I know we love the wars, we have an original Star Wars seven inch here, free from 1977, for you to sample. It's kind of That's harder to sample the bigger artists like John Williams, I'll isn't? Give you another production credit. Yeah. <laughs> What do you think about that when you sample somebody more well known? It's 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 hard to clear. Uh, what did we clear last time? What did we clear? Eulogy. Oh yeah, we clipped, but we cleared that one with Biggie. Uh, shout out to Steve Rifkin. We were for helping we were surprised. On that. So we were surprised to get the Biggie sample yeah. cleared, but we did. How hard was it like to get a Biggie sample oh. cleared? And is Puff Daddy making some money? I'm not sure. I know at first they they didn't want to, the state wasn't going for it, but. Um, Again, shout out Steve Rifkin. He was a big help. He had them listen to the track and they liked it. So we Which, worked something out. 
with that being said, if Dr. Dre wants to clear explosive for us, we have a track we've been sitting on for like yeah. two years now, so. The eight ounce burger, mayo, lettuce, tomato, red onions, pickle. They be greedy as hell, these labels, man. I ain't even gonna start on it. It don't make no sense, especially in this sort of situation. It's not like they're nobodies, you know what I'm saying? Like, they really, like, got their own umpire now, you know what I'm saying? Like, why wouldn't they clear a sample like this? It's kind of ridiculous. Pickles, french fries, and shake. Is that the Audi burger? It's the Ruby Special? Yes, exactly. Please explain. Uh, my dad owns a restaurant called Russell's Marina Grill, and... Uh, when I used to work there, I was a manager. I would like come up with stupid like specials that he could do for the week or something. And one of the ones I made up was like a Ruby uh, special, which came with a burger, fries, and it was supposed to be a cherry vanilla shake, but we let people decide what they wanted to drink. Do you have it? Have I had it before? Nah, I'm good. I get the Ruby special every day. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Boom. And Big Al. Yeah, Big Al. Shout out Big Al. Yeah, Original yeah, Bloody Marys, yeah. baby. Yeah, shout out Big yeah, Al. Yeah, Big Al. He helps out, doesn't he? Yes, he does. He's been there for over 30 years now. And your picture's on the wall. Yeah, both of us with uh, Mikey the Magician. Is it? Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's yeah. right. It's like a tourist destination now for like G59 fans to go uh, eat at my dad's spot. It's crazy. And Suicide Boys, I have another gift for you. A Tommy Wright CD. Yeah. What's the importance of Tommy Wright? Um... Shout out Tommy Wright, again, one of the uh, pioneers out of Memphis that uh, pioneered that sound that came out of there. I'm a huge fan of Tommy Wright. Um, we, uh, we sampled him a couple times too. Yeah. Yeah, La Chat, Damn. Womack, the Omen, Riverside Click, yeah. Princess Loco, Princess Loco is fire. Rest in peace. Yes, rest in peace, Princess. I definitely think it's very interesting, like their whole entire, like, I guess their interests and the influence that they've gotten from, like, Memphis. It's pretty cool. That's Loco, Project Pimp, Mac T Dog, MDB, Big Yo, Lil. I don't. I never heard of Lil Jewel. Hardcore Soul Takers. Shout out Lil Ramsey, a legend. 304 E to G. Yeah. But amazing and stuff. Tommy Wright the third. Yeah. Legend. Not only not only was he an amazing rapper, but I got a lot of inspiration from him too because he produced as well as rap, you know? So, shout out Tommy Wright again. So you were doing a lot of producing. You were also, Ruby, playing some drums? Yeah. What exactly <laughs> is going on there? Uh, I'm playing uh, drums for my old band called This Is A Newsy. I was uh, 15. We would wait outside the bar until it was our turn to play because the bartender wouldn't let us in, and then we'd go in and play, and we'd play for just the bartender, and then that was it, go home. <laughs> you describe your look back then? Uh, it's the same as it is now, just my disturbed. own swag, yeah. <laughs> Wait, that's him. How would you describe Ruby's look? A disturbed young man, that someone who needs Christ. And what about Ruby's look right now? Uh, still a disturbed young man that needs Christ. Disturbed young man who needs Christ. Ruby looks like someone I know, or I used to know, I should say. Like, it's kind of crazy. Like, he literally looks exactly like Christ. Yeah. Yeah. And what about it's Scrim's look right now? Mm -hmm. Scrim looks like he's going to... I just assume he's going to rob me at any point in time, so... That's fair, based on my history. That's why I split everything with him, so he wouldn't take it from me. I just give him half of it, so... And you guys played Coachella this year, didn't you? We did, yeah. Did, did the masks help? Because there's a lot of dust. Uh, it doesn't help when you're rapping on stage. Yeah. No, it's not. It doesn't help, no. no, no. Walking around the festival grounds, it's very useful. Yeah. Did you come from a ska scene? Like, how did you get into punk? Uh, just playing just being into rock music in general when i was a young kid and uh punk was the kind of the first thing that i started to gravitate towards and just like would sit and play along to the bands and try and learn how they you know how to play the drums and shit all right so this is an interesting one it's a real interesting one for me to actually know people who actually like dead ass 100 percent are punk and like literally identify as punk and like oh well if you say that you're not punk, then you never were, and all that such like they're like dead ass punk. I want to know if they actually like identify as punk, like for real. I'm not saying they're not, obviously. I just like a real question, you know what I'm saying? Like, I know how serious they are about that shit. Like it's a real like serious culture. Then the other thing is like with punk, they're like totally against mainstream. You know what I'm saying? Like, like I said, like I, I know people that I've like literally talked to about this, and like they're they're pretty much just like yeah, like. If we're playing this music and shit and it went mainstream, I'd probably kill myself or something like that. I'm just, I was like, that's one way to look at it, I guess. Like, they do not rock with mainstream at all. So I was kind of curious if they actually identify as, like, punk to some extent at all, you know?
This is another one of your bands, Ruby. Could you explain what is going on here? A great tattoo, and what band is this? This is uh, Vapor Rats. Uh, that's the logo, actually. Uh, it was like the Vix, whatever the fucking uh, Rat Trap company's called. We just stole it. I still have this drum kit. It's PDP. Now, your band had quite a following. I noticed people had... Vapor Rats tattoos. Yeah, we had we had a lot of uh, a lot of cross punk fans, and they would get the the logo tattooed on them. Have you seen any of those recently at any Suicide Boys gigs? Oh hell no, 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 I haven't. No, I gave a few shirts away uh, a couple of years ago just for like diehard fans, but that's been about it. Quote: Ruby is such a misfit, and I have a gift for you: an original Misfits seven inch, their first one from 1977, a repro, yeah. a repro, because. The original goes for $14,000. Oh, wow. So this is a repro. This is the first thing they dropped was with uh, She and Cough Cool. She's a great song. Cough Cool fucking sucks, though. I don't like that song. But this is the first thing they ever dropped. Do you have that? I don't. No, this is sick. I don't, uh, I don't have this. I had the box set when I was like 14, but this is sick. I guess this is a bootleg because I couldn't afford the $1,400. Oh, 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 sorry, the $14,000. afford it. <laughs> bah, boo. That's not oh, what, right? what do you think about that? Like paying $14,000 for a record? Uh, I'm sure there are people out there that'll do it. Um, if you're a diehard, why not, man? I guess, you know. Have you got some Suicide Boys products stored away ready for that day? No. The, the most we've been offered for something like that was, uh, remember back in the day, we weren't even that big yet, some like, some like chic from like Saudi Arabia offered us like 15 grand to do a feature for him but we turned him down I think the, the someone ripped my dread out when I had dreads one time and I, I seen it listed on eBay for like 4 grand I don't know if it's old <laughs> yeah you played people Brooklyn crazy, for like yeah. 4 people I did yeah. what was that like uh, at that point I was used to it um, you know we did a tour back in 2012 and drove from New Orleans to basically Rhode Island and stopped at Brooklyn for there was like free music day in New York and uh, we played under a bridge for like five people what's it like like playing for five people and then a packed house today at Summer Smash I, I put on the same show it's the same shit no matter who's there what about you Scrum what do you think about that like playing for a small amount of people and a big amount of people yeah kind of the same attitude uh Actually, it was it was actually him that taught me early on because I used to just DJ, but it was him when we actually started performing. Taught me that no matter if you got one person out there or you got thousands of people out there, you go out and you get the best because those people came out to see you. So I'm I'm not out there to just fuck around on a microphone. I'm there to entertain people and give them a good time. What is the least amount of people you have played for? You probably were lock in regardless. None. I mean, we've played for nobody before. <laughs> Explain that night. Baton Rouge. We did Baton Rouge yeah. a couple of times. I think maybe your dad. My was dad there. was there. Yeah. So one. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe. Were you looking at the door and nobody came? How did explain the situation? So we would play these shows all the time on the North Shore in Baton Rouge, and we knew that nobody would be there. We just did it because it was good practice, and we could like get some ideas down of how we wanted the shit to go later on. So, yeah. Yeah. So when your dad walked through the door, that was excitement. Yeah, I mean, it's at least one person was yeah, there that yeah. fucked with us, you know? Yeah. But, but yeah, have you ever done a show we expected people to be there and nobody was there? Uh, yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm sure. I I'm sure. expect some people to be there in Baton Rouge, but yeah, it was it was dead. I brought, I literally brought my dad as a way to be like, come check out what we're doing, man. We're really doing this. Because he was always bitching at me about running the electricity yeah. bill up and shit like that. I was like, man, come see what we're doing. And he gets there and there's fucking one person there. <laughs> <laughs> and Scrim, I have another gift for you. Oh, for me? Yes, I have another gift for you. A producer record right here. Check out this. An actual producer record because you're a... Producer. You're a producer. And check out the back, all the different tempos. Read some of that that you could possibly. Would this work in the Suicide Boys? Check out the descriptions. Sliding up tempo, minor key rock, drums, and mood. Oh, this is tight. Yeah, all these possibilities <laughs> for Suicide Boys. No, no, is that his fifth uh, credit that he's going to get? Yeah. Fourth is this shit? Come on, bro. I'll give that to you. You can have that. Thank you. Can have that. Uh, but I'm not just a producer, no, bro. You are part of the sewer. I was going crazy. Side. Bo. Z. Z. And a rapper. Ba boom. And the best rapper besides this. But you did produce Germ. Germ. Yeah. Shout out Germ. Shout out. Germ. Bad shit. Actually, shout out Shakewell. Shout out Germ. Shout out Ramirez. Shout out Night Lavelle. Shout out Cheddar. Shout out the whole. And Night Lavelle. Canadian. Yeah. Night Lavelle. Yeah. Yeah. Canada. 
And another producer I was going to ask you about, Indo G. Indo G. Did you sample it for Ashes? Yeah, Ashes. Ashes of luxury. I was trying to think of the song. Yeah, that's it. Ashes of luxury. Also got this other uh, beat that we haven't jumped on yet, but we will, where we sampled Indo G again. I'm trying to see if the song's on here that we sampled. Blame it on the phone. Yeah, that's the song. Yep. That's it. What can you say about Indo G? Oh, this is the other one that we, we sampled that we're, we haven't rapped on yet. We got the weed. Indo G is a legend, bro. I mean, he's a legend. What, what more do I need to say? How does Scrum discover all these artists? Uh, he just goes on I mean oh, some yeah. of it, some of it's knowledge that he's been had and some of it's just going on YouTube and finding new stuff yeah I'll, I'll yeah. be honest with you some well, of it discovering old stuff yeah some of it's knowledge some of it is rediscovering old stuff but dude believe it or not a lot of the samples that I find is just me spending hours on YouTube just scrolling and searching speaking of YouTube you sampled the needle drop yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah we did Fantano for Fantano hates us for um the Travis Barker collab, Live Fast, Die, Whenever. Uh, we wanted to kind of just a little tongue in cheek irony, yeah. you know. He's always dog. Yeah. Ribbity, yeah. ribbity, ribbity, yeah. ribbity, 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 ribbity. But that's kind of an honor. That's cool to be sampled. I, I, I had uh, DM'd him and I was like, hey, we're going to use part of the review you did on us for our tra project with Travis Barker. Is that cool? And he's like, yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, go ahead. I think we might sample you, Narwhal. Yeah. We might sample this. A baboon. We might sample those pants, Narwhal. Yeah, yeah. A baboon. Ooh, in the Air Max. Yeah, I have a positive, man. I'm, I'm curious to know what Fantano thinks of them, man. Fantano be shitting on everybody, man. <laughs> I mean, every once in a while, he'll like give an album a good rating, but I'm kind of curious. Well, only the best for the Suicide Boys. Yeah. Only the best. Thank you, blessed. And I have another gift for you. Speaking of producer type stuff, we have a sealed. Ooh, coming out hard. Wow. They wow. bone MJG, baby. Man, so another little fun fact. Uh, we have another beat that uh, I sampled from these guys that we're going to be using pretty soon. Oh, dude, this this one is this is the one. This is this is the one with the coming out hard uh, yeah. little millimeter. Yeah, dude, this one's good. It's a yeah, sampler of saying, uh, tear it up. No, tear it up. Uh, down Park Evans. A sealed hey. cassette. Yeah. Damn. Yeah. Shit. That's pretty awesome. From of, Memphis. This is one of the best uh, Memphis records of all time and one of the best Dirty South records of all time. Yeah, agreed. agreed. Shout out 8-Ball MJG. Yeah. What was the South Side Tour like? The South Side Suicide Tour back in 2016? <laughs> oh, that was... Gruel and it was like 13 people on a sprinter van. Well, we did like 40 something shows, yeah, and in, uh, in, in like a month, too. Yeah. yeah, I think we walked away with like 7k and, and we thought we were doing it big. I, I quit my job right yeah, before that's that tour. And X was along, X yeah. came the last R. R. few shows. We met him in Orlando. What was X like in the pit? Like, he started a couple circle pits, didn't he? Oh, so I, I remember meeting X, and, and look at me was already out, and I. I knew that he was going to be big. I knew that he was, he had something about him. He had that it factor about him. But besides all that, which people already know, I got, me and him got really tight. We had a, we had a relationship where we conversed often and he was probably one of the best people that I've known, like a really, a good guy, a good guy. What was it like in the pit? Like, didn't he go into the pit? He was gnarly. He would like throw hot. shit off the stage into the crowd. Uh, I remember we played like our first, like pretty nice venue. It was open. the last show in Miami and he opened for us and he was like throwing the mic stand and all the chairs into the crowd and starting like a fucking riot. And the crowd run up on stage. Yeah. And Mikey the Magician had to like pull him aside and be like, dude, look, I feel you, but at the same time, like we're never gonna be able to come back to this yeah. venue ever again, but yeah. whatever, it was a cool. Yeah, I know they burn up the mass. <laughs> They were sitting up for like probably more than 40 minutes at this point. Just because all the time they probably spent their off camera. Yeah, I know they burn up. Story of the Tom. And you are the Suicide Boys. And winding up here, have you seen the Suicide Boys comic that's out what? by Ethan Deploy? So I've ever, I've never actually seen this in person, but I've seen it online. What? Yeah, you didn't know that existed? No, I did. You can open up to the anointed pages right there. It's all about a video. Yeah, it's like the. Um, oh, okay. The, the one we shot in Finland. Yeah. Damn, this is pretty cool. This is really cool. Yeah, he definitely fucking snapped. Shout out, Ethan. Yeah, Ethan, reach out to us, bro. 
Let's do something officially. What's happening here, just in case people are wondering? I'm, uh, <laughs> that is dope. Though. I'm possessed, and I'm on a lot of drugs. That was the norm back then, you know? So this was in Finland, and while this was going on, while Scrim was doing his part and Max was shooting it, I was debating whether or not I should go through Scrim's backpack and see if he stole my fucking Zans. But something, you know, I'm, I'm a loyal motherfucker, and I didn't do that, so. Which I didn't. Turns out, turns out I'm a fucking idiot, and they spilled all over my bag. He didn't steal them. I always have enough drugs for myself. But an amazing Suicide Boys comic book that people can pick up if they want. Yeah, yeah that's sick. Because I know you love the comic books, and winding up here, I have another bunch of gifts for you. Some vintage comic books. This one from 1991, a Vanilla Ice comic book. Yeah. And then kind of like one about hip hop history shit, by Ed Pisker. I've seen this series. This one's cool. I haven't seen this one, though. This is sick. Yeah, that's actually the comic book part of the bigger book, but it's an amazing okay. sort of history. Because you're into comic books, aren't you? Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, shout out Vanilla Ice. I mean, he he was a, a pioneer for us crackers. Yeah. And that's 91. <laughs> that's a vintage one. Yeah, yeah. Let me check out the pages you got, Mark. Oh, this is cool. Salt and Pepper, Kid and Play, Martin Lawrence. It's good stuff, Narvar. Joe's Donuts. Joe's Donuts. Is that a local spot or something? Joe's Cafe. That's, a, that's the spot. Good donuts. On okay. call, on call I, away, baby. I just chill in my house, but I don't go nowhere. Wade's Seafood Shack. That's the, wait, wait, wait. That might be some. Is that in West Wego? Can you tell me that much? Is that in West Wego? It is? Damn, I think that's where we used to go get crawfish and oysters. Probably. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Damn. All right, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. That's a good one. Long ass uh, long, crops. Long ass crops? Oh, I got crops. Long ass crops. Yeah, shout out Curb Lagoop. <laughs> <laughs> uh, curb on uh, Magnolia. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That is, that is the fans' favorite feature. Yeah, that we've ever done. So, just for the fans to know, and uh, later next year we're going to be dropping a full-length tape, with three curb. three-parter, each one's 15 songs. Yeah, with Curb Lagoop. But on a serious note, shout out Curb no, Lagoop. Big shout out Curb Lagoop. And shout out also to Montreality because they actually recommended that I talk to you. Oh, hell yeah. They really? passed on a message. Hell yeah. Hell so yeah. thank you, Montreality. Why, why did it take you so long to find us? Well, I'm from Vancouver, British Columbia, Canada. I don't think you come there too often. We went there once or twice, and one of the only times we went there, he almost got in a fight with a very aggressive homeless man. Yeah. And he said, you only have face tattoos because you're fucking ugly. And Scrum turned around and said, what the fuck did you say? And was ready to fight him. And I was like, he's homeless. Let's just let's yeah. just keep going. There's not... probably some truth to that, too, which hurt. <laughs> <laughs> Anything else you'd like to add at all, Suicide Boys? Keep your head up. Keep marching on. Life gets tough. Fuck them all. I'm great till I die, bitch. If you could comment your favorite waterfowl species in the comments of this video, that'd be great. We'll do a poll and see which one wins. Why should people care about the Suicide Boys? Why should they care? They shouldn't. Fuck if I know. I've been wondering that. <laughs> well, thanks so much, Suicide Boys. Keep on rocking in the free world and do, 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 do. Almost do, 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 do. <laughs> Yeah. Got a standoff. If I ever found myself on Norway, I would definitely. <laughs> I'll stand there longer than he does. I'll try to at least. Nah, man. Hey, y'all got to let me know if y'all think that shit scripted or not. Honestly, I don't know. I think it's about fifty feet. Yeah, I think Ruby was doing a little bit of acting there, but maybe he wasn't. I don't know.